Hello, and welcome to Super Mario Words, where we discuss random Mario things, and then we rank them. Uh, I'm Sen. And I'm Drew. So today, we're going to be talking about Super Mario 64's paintings. Paintings! Um, so for those who aren't familiar, in, in Super Mario 64, you get a letter from Peach. Yes. And it says that there's going to be cake. Uh, so then um, you should go come to our castle to get some cake. Yes. Um, but the, in fact, it, it's a clever ruse. There is no cake. Yes. You could almost say. But you wouldn't. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so when you come to the castle, all of the castle's residents, uh, and all of its power stars, which are a thing it has, I guess. It, it, um, it definitely does. Are trapped inside magic paintings. And you go into the paintings to access the worlds, the, the levels in yes. Super Mario 64. And rescue the stars. Yes. Um, so we're, we're going to uh, start off with our first discussion question, which is um, when you go into the paintings, are, are the, the places you go in them real places or not? Yeah, or are they some sort of magic simulacrum of a magic painting? Mm-hmm. So what what do you think? Because I I think that I could kind of go either way. Well, okay. the The big thing that I thought of here is that in some of these, there do seem to be beings who are not members of Bowser's army and are just going about their their lives. Apparently, mm. for instance, the um, the penguins in Chili Cold Land. I don't remember the name of it. Yeah, uh, you know. Cold, cold, chilly land <laughs> is probably what it's called. Yeah, that's Hold definitely on. what it's called. Um, it's a uh, cool, cool mountain. I was almost right. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, th there are penguins there. Yeah. Um, I guess, so there's two, two ways of interpreting that. Yes. Which is that either A, those beings exist independently of whatever funky ship bowser's doing yes or that they they are kind of complex seals to trap the Ooh. um like like you know how in shadow of the colossus nope um then never mind <laughs> um but like that you can use magic to like seal a uh, something inside of an entity that that, that doesn't necessarily act within its original form's interests ah, maybe yeah so the you have the, the seal of the penguin oh yes and the penguins themselves are are sort of constructs that yes that who seem to be living beings who don't want you to speak to them or their son ever again <laughs> but are in fact just simply a way to hold the power of the power star yes um that's one way to see it yes I, it is admittedly a little bit harder to explain the the pink bombs. Oh yeah. Um, in that case, which are just kind of like guys who are like, "Hey, want to use our cannon?" <laughs> and I don't know if I could come up with a complex way of explaining that. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Does that is there a way to explain that, or does that break our theory? I well, okay. One possibility is that both the penguins and the pink bombs are actually people who live in Peach's castle. And we're mm. trapped within the paintings by Bowser. And they don't remember... They possibly don't even remember their regular lives, though. They have they have been turned into actors in this strange dream construct. Yes. Of course, it's also hard to explain what a penguin would be doing in Peach's Castle, but... I mean, you got all kinds. It's true. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of like that. Because <laughs> it is established that the residents of the castle are trapped... But you mostly just see them, the toads and stuff, as like forced ghosts. Yeah. Um, kind of you, around the castle. You definitely see forced ghost toad. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if if there are residents that are actually trapped in the paintings, it would make sense that some of the characters we see in them um, are those residents. Yeah. It's kind of like a Beauty and the Beast situation. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, and in fact, some of maybe there are even like enemies who are there actually like toads who have been. 
turned Turn into it. yeah and i mean you know part of the lore in certain times has been that goombas are former toads who got transformed so yeah okay i think i think that this one's got legs yeah i, I think no goombas don't have legs well like <laughs> they might have very like very tiny i, I guess legs just yeah. kind of wedged possibly right in there but anyway um yeah <laughs> so i th i think that so I, I guess you could say that maybe they're 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 kind of they're they're kind of in a space between the real yes. and the unreal you have to it, you have to use alternate universes to understand this. To, yeah, <laughs> to, to, to explain this, we're going to talk about parallel universes. There you go. Uh, anyway, um, so I guess we can we can narrow it on this with our second discussion question, which is uh, where are the painting worlds actually located? Yeah, and they seem to be like basically extra dimensional bubbles that the mm. painting acts as a portal to. Yeah, so the the painting itself is like a representation so it, it's kind of like you you use the power of the the dream logic yes to extrapolate a painting into a physical space that makes sense um kind, kind of, of kind of like the um music video for take on me <laughs> it's exactly like that it is exactly like that yeah um so i think i think that that um we we the most logical conclusion is that that we are in some kind of metaphysical magic dimension that makes sense and you know what since we're talking about these as a kind of dream state i got to wonder if they are actually related to subcon oh shit yeah clearly yes yeah yeah um i think we concluded in our second episode that subcon it doesn't exist but um that's we're, we're retconning it now well it, okay mario's subcon is mario's dream but at the same time mario in the power of his dream created this other space that mm. in a sense can be said to physically exist so do you think that bowser constructed the worlds or do you think that the magic of the the painting um used mario's subconscious to create Ooh. to construct the world what what do That's you think? That's possible, but oh, you know it would really make sense if it actually used Peach's subconscious, because mm. this is her castle, and like in fact these may well be paintings that she genuinely already had, and mm. it could use the like energy of her artistic impression of these to construct these worlds man i'm just imagining like Bowser storms a castle to like kidnap a different princess, yeah, and, like, looks around and is, like. Ah, shit. She doesn't have any paintings. <laughs> now what am I going to do? I'm it, just, uh, t no, this isn't going to work. He just leaves. <laughs> he doesn't have any paintings. You know, this is why Bowser never actually tries to kidnap Princess Daisy. Hmm. You have to be an alien. To, yes. Only aliens can kidnap Princess Daisy. Only aliens understand Princess Daisy's sense of art. Yeah. She, she's really into those, like, kind of modern art sculptures. Yeah. And trapping someone in those is like, oh, man, such a pain in the ass. Do you have any <laughs> idea what kind of landscape is generated from those? Oh, God. It's um, probably, like, all cubist and... Yeah. Um, looks, looks like an early 3D render. They, yeah, they tried to do that, and then, like, one of Bowser's soldiers went through, and he came out, and, and he's, he's like... Uh, Oh man, what was that Star Trek quote from when they they, they had a teleporter malfunction? Oh God, <laughs> uh, like something like death was uh, mercifully quick or something. Uh, it was something like uh, you you wouldn't want to know what what came back. Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah. Anyway, aside from that dark, <laughs> that that got weird. <laughs> I think it's mostly my fault. Um, <laughs> So those are yeah, um, so those so those so it, so those are generated in the dream world. Yes. Um, and so we can see, oh man. Um, so this is this is kind of like one of those things where it like creates like Silent Hill. Yeah. Right? It like creates a tortured dream space that 
is is like your own personal hell. Yeah, and considering that, Peach's personal hell is really nice. I mean, it's not not bad. Yeah, I would I would visit as yeah. long as the bad people are cleared out. I mean, to be fair, the Subcon is also not especially hellish, yeah. other than Phanto. So maybe, maybe Silent Hill isn't exactly. Yeah, but or... it's still like part of your thoughts, your subconscious, things drawn from your mind and experiences. Yeah, uh, like like uh, Persona Five. Yeah, there also. you go. That, that's a better. Yeah. So it it's it's a metaphysical space. It is. Um, and it it is from someone's mind, maybe Peach's or maybe Mario's. Yes. Um. And since Joker from Persona Five is now at Smash, we know that he can, in fact. Um, unlock Peach's soul. That's not the term used, but <laughs> sure. sure. I like, haven't actually played it. But... Fair enough. Um, <laughs> he unlocks her soul. Yes. Um, he, he, he allows her to be cleansed of her sins so that she can go to Jesus. <laughs> it's actually a very, very complex um, version of, of uh, evangelizing. Oh, God. Um, this is... This is a Christian server. <laughs> anyway, JRPG confession. Anyway, yes. Um, so I think that that satisfies me. We we have unlocked a very important and crucial piece of information. <sighs> yes. About uh, the, the paintings. painting worlds. Yeah. Um, okay. So now we have our next discussion question. So paintings yes. do appear in other games yes um specifically super mario odyssey and luigi's mansion mm -hmm. and we're curious if those paintings are the same as the ones from mario 64 yes um, now i think that what we've learned from this can lead me to make what i think is a fairly logical claim all right which is that the ones from uh, luigi's mansion are the same Mm -hmm. But the ones from Odyssey are completely different things. Fascinating, because I was thinking the exact opposite. Really? Well, let me explain yeah. my thinking. Yeah, you go ahead. So the point of the painting in Mario 64... Yes. ...is to... <clears throat> sorry. ...is to create a metaphysical space. Yeah. Um, and so I'm thinking that the, the, the paintings in Luigi's Mansion, which is um, Mario gets trapped in a painting and Luigi yeah. has to rescue them. And um, other characters do, too. Yeah. Everyone's just getting trapped in paintings all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Which, first of all, resembles the residents of Peach's Castle getting trapped in paintings. That is and Second, true. Uh, a metaphysical space is the ideal way to trap someone, I think. That is true. Um, and where, especially... Oh, you go ahead. Whereas uh, in Odyssey, mm -hmm. um, the paintings mostly just function as, like, portals to different places. Mm, okay. Which seems like something completely different from from creating a metaphysical space in order to trap someone in their own personal hell and or just kind of generally pleasant landscape. Okay. That that is fair. That is fair. What is your viewpoint on it? All right, I'm going to say let, let me um mm -hmm. go back to my previous opinion and edit it. I will first of all I'll agree that the Luigi's Mansion ones are similar. Okay. I feel like it seems like they don't create full worlds. Rather, they, they create much more constrained spaces, which makes sense because they only hold one person at a time mm. rather than a bunch of people, power stars, stuff like that. May I raise a counterpoint? Certainly. Um, we don't know that because we only see the surface. That's we can, true. We, we don't... can't go into the paintings. That is true. So we don't. we can't really say that for certain. But none of them, like, none of the Luigi's Mansion paintings have these abstract looks as the 64 ones do. They are, it literally looks like a painting of Mario. Yeah, it is just the guy. Yeah, so um, I, I would say it's, it, you know, it, it's more constrained in some sense, at least. Mm. Even if only a metaphysical one. That, I guess I can see... Where are you going with that? Okay. Okay, second in Odyssey, um, I would actually say that there seem to be two different classes of paintings. Mm. One type um, allows you to warp from world to world. And, you know, from the Sand Kingdom to the Metro Kingdom or Wooded Kingdom to Luncheon Kingdom, whatever. Right. And these do not create their own metaphysical space. They just transform what you between seemingly regular physical spaces. As if any space in the Mario games is regular, but yeah, and possibly, you know, possibly this is what the paintings 
originally acted as, you know? Mm, or possibly okay. these are related so magical were, technologies. So they were you're saying they were always magic paintings. Yeah. Okay. Possibly 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 not, but uh, or so it, so they are intended to be portals and what happens if you disable the other one end is that you get trapped in the pattern buffer. Yes, exactly. Mm, yeah. And the second set of paintings supports this because they are ones that you can go into to have a uh, redo a boss battle with one of the bosses. Mm. And it does seem to be this constrained space with just the boss in their area. All right. Can I just say I'm not even like a Star Trek fan? Yeah. <laughs> Just had this opportunity, I guess. You yeah. Know, I'm just making Star Trek references all over the place. I, I mean, when you if you feel it, definitely. So, oh, man. So uh, you're right, because I wasn't thinking of the boss refight paintings. Does Are we trapping these guys in paintings? Possibly, but also possibly Mario... Uh, no, not Mario. Bowser is creating these spaces to protect or control these beings. Hmm. I haven't played much Odyssey, so I'm not entirely sure what the status of the bosses is. I think, well, one of them is Bowser. So we know Bowser is not trapped yes. in a painting. No. The, Bow however, all of these, all of the other boss refights besides Bowser mm -hmm. um, are found in the Mushroom Kingdom. Mm. Um, so I think it's very possible that we have trapped these beings in paintings it's kind of painting jail yes that jail. would that would make sense jailed for painting crimes <laughs> um yeah so i hmm yeah because i if it if the paintings were intended to be portals and then you kind of mess with them so that they go to a sort of non-space yeah generated by the, the mind palace yes um i'm going to my mind palace then that that's a unifying theory that brings all the paintings that we see together yes um because then it can be used the, the 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 nowhere paintings can be used to to hide things yes or it can be used as like the the phantom zone exactly that's that's, <laughs> that's the one from the comic books right yeah definitely okay the phantom zone yes yes and if you've seen superman 2 you know that the three guys trapped in the phantom zone actually looks a lot like mario trapped in the painting yeah i'll take your word for it, it it's like they're pounding on the this flat surface mm, that's yeah. unsettling it is um <laughs> We, we have to dismantle Superman's carceral state. It, we do. <laughs> anyway. Um, to be fair, it's Krypton's carceral state. Superman didn't put him there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like this is... We're, we're getting all kinds of powerful insights about these paintings. We are. Um, so we have another discussion question about um, stuff outside of Super Mario 64. Oh, yes. Which is the graffiti from... Super Mario Sunshine. Yes. Um, so in them... Yeah. So we, we see... So I, I, as a refresher, the villain is um, Bowser Jr. Yes. Not Baby Bowser. No. <laughs> who disguises Mario, uses a magic paintbrush, and he paints a portal onto a flat surface and jumps into it. Yes. Um, and I think that this is probably very closely related because it is a portal yes between two places in Al, Al Dolfino. so you... exactly and most of these most of these are just portals between one place and another but occasionally you do get like these spaces that baby bowser as shadow mario has created bowser jr dad it, it's hard isn't it <laughs> it is they <laughs> they're really similar characters and they sound similar yes but no Bowser Jr. as Shadow Mario has created his own challenge spaces for you, hmm. where he also gets to control some of the rules, and that is more similar to the, you know, the 64 paintings. I see. So he cre also uses it to create nowhere spaces. Exactly. And then that also does explain how those places exist, which I believe is not given any real explanation no. in the game. No. Um this yeah we're, we're we're kind of we're creating this unifying theory of yeah. mysterious portals here and i note that e um professor e gad who created flood also created the magic paintbrush mm. and therefore 
the creation of the magic paintbrush is one of the steps between the paintings in Mario 64 mm -hmm. and the the which are you know just something that Bowser uses even though they're apparently according to our theory existing portals and the ones in Odyssey which right. are very seem to be very common portals between different places and are also easily seemingly quickly created jails for the defeated bosses yes um yeah so i i think that we're seeing a lot of a lot of commonality yeah and it seems like there's a progression of this technology yeah and so i guess it seems like the magic paintbrush is kind of the bridge between magic and technology in this indeed, world, indeed, indeed. Which, uh, considering that Egad also created the uh, the Poltergust, yes, which is the vacuum that vacuums up ghosts, <laughs> um, that it, it seems like his creations kind of exist in this sort of magical technology space. Yeah, um, I think we're gonna have to. I I haven't really seen a lot of him, yeah, but I think that Egad. He's really starting to become an important background figure in our podcast. And I think we're going to have to put a lens under him at some point. Absolutely. Um, so that's that's going to be... We're, we're going to have to do some, some research on that because I don't remember a lot of details about him. He doesn't appear yeah. in person in a lot of games. Just the Luigi's Mansion ones, I think. He doesn't even appear in person in Super Mario Sunshine, despite the fact that... No, no. He um, just, he's, I believe he's just a name in that. Yeah, which is weird, actually. Yeah. I think about it. Uh, I think he does appear in person in one of the, uh, the Mario and Luigi games. Ah, that makes sense. Um, I think he, like, runs a coffee shop. Okay. I seem, we'll have to look into that. I seem to remember that was what he was doing. Um, why not? Yeah, why not? Um, all right. So let's move on to our next discussion question. Yeah. Um, which is, what are the paintings made of? Did someone actually paint them? All right, well, I, I feel like we've made big strides towards answering this one, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, so you had an earlier theory that these were, in, in Super Mario 64, that these were previously existing paintings. Yes. Um, previously existing paintings that we now know are were already portals. Right. Um, but we do see that there are paintings created that couldn't possibly have already existed yes because they depict characters we didn't know about before that is true um depicting events that didn't happen until the game itself indeed um so okay if the paintings were portals yes there's two important questions that i think have to be answered okay the first one is um were they physically painted mm. and second um did they where did they go before that like did they did they look the same did like mm. like there's one of them that is like a picture of like snowmen did that yeah. what did that one go to a snow place before or when it was altered did it did it change into yeah. a different painting like oh man that's a good point and if they were like, por portals before we don't really know where they originally led it's possible that these ones have been painted over mm, actually i have a theory but I, okay do you, do you want me to take this one yes please go ahead all right so supposing that the paintings already looked this way before yeah and then they were altered yeah they, their destination was cut off and they were now traveling to a nowhere space yeah and the physical space on the other side is now created by the the mind palace yes then what we are seeing might be a dream or memory of the place it's supposed to go oh yeah so then so the lethal lava land painting yeah right it has a big picture of like a, a fire face yeah so it previously went to some kind of fire land yeah and then when mario sees it and he goes into it it is either his construction of either how he remembers the place or if he's never been there what he imagines it would be like based on seeing the painting and how much whether he knows the place or not oh, maybe so like oh. so they're like memory spaces created from the mind palace 
Yeah. And I know, like, for Tiny Huge Island, for instance, mm. there are other places in the Mario games that are Tiny Huge. Yes. And so that, that lends credence to the idea that it could be originally pointing to a real place. Mm. Yeah. And it kind of, I guess, kind of is the idea that, that, that it is kind of a, a dream logic space is the fact that there are, are two paintings mm, of yes. Tiny Huge Island. One entering one makes you small, and entering the other one makes you big. That, that makes sense. Um, and so you're, it, it makes sense that it's a metaphysical space. Indeed. And I got a, there's one thing you said that yes. I do want to poke at, which is talking about how it, when you go into it, uh, you're, the world within is based on Mario's interpretation. But what if it's actually based on the painter? Hmm. Like, let's say that you are painting one of these painting portals, right? Right. It would make sense that due to this, the magicality of it, you would have a destination in mind and be painting towards that destination, be creating the link to there with your understanding of that place. Hmm. And therefore, the unspace that's made when that link is cut off may be just out of your artistic interpretation of that place mm. i see yeah um so who painted these paintings that's a good question and there don't seem to be a lot of hints towards that possibly it was peach herself hmm. possibly it's somebody else who was on her payroll who was particularly artistic i think i don't think it was peach okay because um i think for something like this you would need uh, a specialist yeah. who does have oh. magic powers. I'm sorry sorry to interrupt, but that makes me realize yeah. the purpose of the magic paintbrush is that so anyone can do it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, because apropos of nothing, it seems weird just to make a magic paintbrush. Right. Especially when magic painting has already exist. Hmm. Well, I mean, I was th <laughs> thinking... Like, without the context of painting magic existing, uh, yeah. it seems weird just to decide, like, one day, like, I'm going to just make a, a paintbrush, and it's magic, and it <laughs> makes graffiti. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, in fact, yes, um, we can probably say causing pollution was probably not the intended purpose of the magic paintbrush. Yeah. Um, it, the portal pr function probably was what it was made for. Yes. Which means that probably all of the pollution on Isle Delfino is, like, corrupted portal magic. That makes sense. Um, mm, this is... I, this is a, I'm very interested in this topic. I think we're going to have to make a note. We should do one on the ma magic paintbrush. We should. Um, we're, we're just... This, this one's... Um, <laughs> there's all kinds of inspiration coming onto the blank canvas of this episode kind of <laughs> kind of like um um uh, what's the word a, um, a, like um, a... drawing <laughs> yes anyway a an artist's rendition if you will yes um <laughs> so i think that that i think we we kind of have covered it pretty well yes. um would you like to move on to the ranking um certainly i one other thing is that if if we ever think of who the painter might be who created these, we should have an episode about that. Mm. Or if we just decide without evidence who made well, it. Well, we would never do that. We only talk about things that are canon. It's true. <laughs> Every single thing we've said in all of these episodes is 100% true. Yes. Yeah, including the part about the psychosexual drama. Absolutely. That one's the most canon. It's the most canon. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, are you ready to rank the yes. paintings? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, so I, I didn't write Shy Guy into the list, but I think you remember where it yeah. goes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So I, it's a little hard because this one isn't sentient. Yeah. Um, but I think that these are kind of an important background detail. They've clearly, they're clearly an important piece of magic in yes. this world. And they help to contextualize this whole world. Mm. They're fundamental, kind of. Maybe the paintings are the conceptual prototype for the mask gate, which is another Ooh. portal that Mario dreamed about. That is true. But it shared his, its mystic wisdom with him. 
Yes, and that's another thing where Mario may have seen something in the real world mm -hmm. and reproduced a twisted version of it in his dream. I also feel like the paintings are a really important part of the flavor and uh, aesthetic of Super Mario 64. Yeah. Um, Honestly, at this point, I'm thinking about putting them above Flood. Ooh. Um, oh, man. Um, that reminds me. There was one other thing I wanted to bring up. Oh, yes. Um, there are a few kind of non-standard things that are portals in the game. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is like a clock face. Oh, yeah. That's you can, right. You can jump into. Um, which I guess reinforces the idea that these were existing artifacts because it's hard to yeah. imagine Bowser make making a clock just to have a level in it. Yeah. Did Peach just have a big room that's just, there's a big clock in, in it? I mean, it's possible there were other things in this room and they got sucked into one of these painting worlds mm. or the clock world. That does make a lot more sense. Yeah. Um, it's the, the thought that you could apply this kind of painting magic to a clock is very interesting it's very interesting mm, um but we're, we're we're getting to the end here yeah and um i'm i'm not sure how what what we could say about that but i think it's i think that's something to sit on yeah and if if clocks come back up as a subject of discussion later maybe we could revisit it um above flood man that that is a, a very strong statement um, I, I think it's deserved hmm um i mean flood is a very distinct um aesthetic element in super mario sunshine mm -hmm. but i think the paintings themselves just like have more as we've seen in this episode they have a lot of depth and possibility to them yeah and like um peach's castle is itself mostly empty yeah. Um, so the the significance and the meaning of these spaces is heavily contextualized by these kind of weird, weird, almost kind of creepy paintings. Yeah. Um, that like one of them's a giant face. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. Um, and just the 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 weird emptiness of the castle, complemented by these magical artifacts. Yeah. Um, is really what creates the environment of yeah. of the hub world in super mario 64 absolutely um so yeah i could see putting that above flood all right um and so i th i think that that uh that'll do it for us this episode okay and the rankings are now um yes so from top to bottom we have uh the paintings mm -hmm. flood mm -hmm. charge and chuck mm -hmm. uh shy guy mm -hmm. and the mask gate yeah um Eventually, we're going to have too many to list off, and we're going to have to figure something out. We will. But that's fine. Um, all right. So we will see you all next time. See you there. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.